the Happy Afloat podcast, tales of family adventures at sea. Hello and welcome aboard. I am Jason, skipper of Happy Afloat. Meet my motley crew. Leon. Hello. Conrad. Ahoy there, shipmates. And my lovely wife, Sarah. Hello. If you are new to the podcast, welcome. But But don't don't start start here. If you want to follow this sailing adventure from the beginning... Hit the rewind button and start at episode 13. Which is part one of this story. If you are interested in the whys and hows of family sailing, jump into the Wayback Machine and fire up episode two of Why Go Family Sailing. For old hands, are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. In this episode, we leave the Caledonian Canal. Start cruising the west coast of Scotland. And we continue our hunt for the rare beast that is camping gas. More tales from our summer adventure. Okay, now, where did you get to last time? We had just arrived at Corpac Basin, the home of the sea lock to the west coast of Scotland. The plan was to stay the night and head out the following day. We had a few tasks to complete before leaving civilization. First was an oil change for our hard-working engine. We aimed to change the oil after about 100 hours of motoring, and this was now overdue. Time for an oil change. Can you move around this side? I'll get into your room and start sucking the oil out with our oil extractor vacuum pumping thing. So with this, we shove this thin tube down the dipstick hole. And we want to do this when the engine is warm. So. The engine oil was hot, which makes sucking it out of the sump with our vacuum pump a breeze. Corpac also had an oil disposal facility which was one of the reasons we chose this spot for the oil change. Curiously, Corpac did not have anywhere where we could dispose of the oil filter. So we had to cart the old filter around with us until a suitable facility was found. While the big boys were sorting out the engine, Mum and I filled up the water tanks. The other jobs could wait until the following day. It was time for a drink and snacks. The dark skies had cleared and we enjoyed the view of Ben Nevis from the cockpit. The following day started with showers for the crew. It's core pack facility review time. What do we think? Sarah, what (laughs) what are the showers like there? (laughs) They leave a lot to be desired. They're very dated. I mean... Is there a shower there? There is. There was a shower in the ladies. I gather there's one in the gents. No, the, the gents wasn't working. All the gents had to use the ladies' oh, shower. Yeah, and and it, I mean it's sort of it's all terracotta tiled. It didn't drain as well, did it? I mean they're clean. They are clean. Yeah, but I mean as a facility that's provided, it's clean. The drainage this time was horrendous. So what you're paddling around in yeah. the previous occupants? Shower oh, no, I, water. I did have the sense to wait till the previous occupant stuff had drained away, but then, <laughs> yeah, that. They're not the best, are they? I mean, it's got a flushing toilet. That's a bonus. That's about it, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's a luxury. But it's not all bad news, because 
There's a new marina being built. It was being built while we were there. They'd built... The car park. The car park <laughs> and a ramp, hadn't they? I think so. To the potential pontoons. I think there's a nice new building there as well. I think the building's almost finished and apparently the Thomas Telford Corpac Marina is supposed to be opening sometime in 2022. Do you think they're going to abbreviate that to the uh, TTC Marina? TTC, TTCM, maybe. Thomas Telford Corpac Marina. It's, it's a bit of a mouthful otherwise, isn't it? Calling them up on the radio. <laughs> But yes, it's on the tidal side, so it's outside the lock, which would be handy. So when you turn up trying to get into the lock, you don't have to time it for water. You can just pull up there and presumably... Um, Go in. Yeah, tie alongside and wait until yeah. you've got suitable water and stay the night and actually have decent facilities. That will be nice. But back to the facilities. Yes. There's no laundry. There's Actually, it's literally just like a toilet and a shower. One toilet, one shower for the ladies and the same for the men, isn't yeah, it? When it's working. Yeah. Otherwise you share... It's very limited. But they do have electricity. Yes, they do have electricity. Yeah. It's very close to the railway station. So if you want to do a crew change. Yes, it is, isn't it? It literally is. It's a good um, stop. Next door. Yeah. The trains run past the other side of the car park. It's like a one yeah. minute walk. If, uh, <laughs> if you're going slow and stopping to admire the view. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's got shops nearby. Yep, there's a co-op and post office. That's the same thing as it's combined, isn't it? Yes, it's all in one. I think there were a few takeaways that I spied on the opposite side of the road. Overall rating is um, it'd be much better when they open new facilities. New facilities. At a completely different Location, marina. brilliant. But facilities provided leave a lot to be desired. Yeah, the view's nice. Yeah. Yeah, the view's nice. <laughs> so, boys, what's your favourite movie series whose characters are young wizards? Um, they go to school to learn magic? Um, can, can we have, have another clue? clue? The head teacher dresses up in his granny's curtains. Rhymes with Harry Otter. Harry Potter. Oh, oh of, of course. course. And what's the connection to Corpac Basin? We get to see the Harry Potter steam train. Well, not the actual train used in the movies. As any Potterhead knows, that's kept in the making of Harry Potter experience at Warner Bros. Studios. The steam train usually runs twice a day past Corpac. Taking fee-paying tourists out from Fort William to Malague over the Glenfinnan Bridge, made famous by the movies. You can sit in the cockpit and watch the steam train pass by. Or walk round to Corpac Station and stand on the platform. To watch the train pass up close. And wave at the people on the train. Yeah, have you had a look at their, the website for the whole thing? No. The only real Harry Potter connection is a couple of carriages were used in the movies. Uh, and it's it's more the fact that it goes over the Glenfinnan Bridge, yeah. which is the bridge that features in the movie, isn't it? Yeah, and I think they stopped there for you to have the photo opportunity, what have you. Yeah. And I still don't know how to pronounce, I call it Malay, but I think it's called Malak or something in Scotland. Well, why pronounce it Malay if you think it's called I Malay? I don't know because I'm terrible at the pronunciation of various Scottish names. I would have thought you'd be better off pronouncing it how you think it's pronounced as opposed to... Oh, but I'm not sure. I, I'm sure I heard some like um, people, some Scottish people pronouncing it as Malak. Feel, for any Scottish listeners, please feel free to give me an education in the pronunciation of all the names I'm getting wrong. <laughs> After the excitement of watching the fake Potter train, we headed round the corner to do some domestic chores. Namely, a trip to the local co-op and post office. To return an Amazon parcel. Which parcel was that? Mm. Well, I don't know. I can't remember either. Well, you were returning that watch you didn't like. Oh, yes, I was. I was returning the watch that was clearly a fake. 
Oh, the watch you got at um, Seaport Marine. Yeah, from lock to lock. I received it at the start. So you, you carried it the whole the length of the canal and decided you didn't like it? <laughs> no. <laughs> it took you only one Caledonian canal to work it About out? About six days. No. Yeah. It was, well, it was a, f- a fake one, was it? It was a fake. It, the, uh, the digits didn't work as they should do. Yes. A bit of a shady outfit that Amazon. Yes, I know. Flopping fake them. gear all the time. Since we had purchased our shiny new main sheet at Inverness... We had temporarily tied a halyard knot to secure the sheet to the traveller block. But we wanted to splice the rope instead. We are novices at splicing, and after much research with Google, Sarah decided we needed to order a splicing kit. I phoned Jimmy Green Marine for a bit of advice. They were extremely helpful, and I scribbled on a post-it note how to splice a 12mm line. I also didn't lose the post-it note. I placed an order for a splicing tool to be delivered to our onward destination of Oban. How did um, the instructions on the post-it note work out? (laughs) Well, I I hadn't lost it. They were quite small. And to be honest, I did struggle a bit with sort of my comprehension of what was being explained to me versus sort of putting it into practice. More about that when we get to Oban. But yes, splice is a lot trickier than it's advertised as. So learn your halyard knot. (laughs) (laughs) Always good to have a plan B. Having decided against paying the high diesel price at Corpac, we bid farewell to the Cali Canal. And locked out into the tidal sea. Do you remember when £1.30 per litre was considered expensive for diesel, Sarah? <laughs> I'm giggling because it's about £1.80 now. £1.30. Go happy days. Yeah. The weather was horrible. And the wind was blowing an unpleasant force four right on the nose. And it was raining. No chance of the kids giving much of a helping hand in that kind of weather. We stayed out of the way. And hid below. With a very wet nose to wind situation. We motored our way down Loch Linney to the Corran Narrows. Which is unsurprisingly narrow. The Narrows reduced the width of the lock from over a mile to less than 200 metres. So the tide is strong here, running up to six knots. You have to time squeezing through to avoid the very frequent ferries crossing your path between the two shores. But we made it, popping out the other side like a cork from a bottle of fizz. Just as the fog rolled in. It was a quiet day in the boating world. And we only saw one other yacht. When the rain stopped and the skies cleared, I got all excited about the next stop of our adventure. We chose a new destination for us. Anchored in a stunning lock, Corrie. We were the only boat in the lock. Surrounded by very tall hills and being pretty isolated, it was my kind of anchorage. Except for the eyesore that was the fish farm, of course. Yeah, it wasn't a very nice fish farm. (laughs) Fish farms aren't attractive and they're even more irritating when they've got a squeaky thing that whizzes around. The good is, if the fish escape, they do mean you get... More profit from your fishing. If you catch them. Yeah. But we'll get on to that, Conrad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry. We'll get on to who's winning the fishing competition. The next day, it started sunny. Not a breath of wind. So, look. Corrie. You can see the bottom. That's six and a half metres down. <laughs> Lovely and clear, isn't it? There's a lot of seaweed, isn't it? Kelp, more than weed. So, you know, it's got a kelpy bottom on the seabed here. That's pretty here, isn't it? Anchor rope stowed away in the locker. <laughs> you can, but then you just have to walk it all the way back up to the anchor. 
here? Yep. Not all the way there, so it doesn't fall down. Oh, right. Otherwise you'll Sorry. be going into the darkest steps of the anchor locker to retrieve it. And you're very welcome to it. Thanks for going down there. Onwards and downwards. Downwards, as in heading south-ish. We were going to Loch Cruran, a short eight miles away. We found a spot to anchor just inside the lock. Just in time for lunch. Whilst we admired the scenery and the neighbouring yachts on the permanent moorings, Sarah spotted an old flame. It was Bellatrix, the first boat that I ever skippered, back in the days when she lived in the Solent. Uh, Was this also the first boat you ever ran aground? Thank you for saying that. No, (laughs) it was a different one. (laughs) I'd like to say I was actually slightly more experienced skipper when I ran a boat aground. Now, judging by the state of Bella Tricks, I'm assuming this was quite a few decades ago when you first skippered this boat. (laughs) Yes, it was. Last century by any chance? uh Three decades ago. Yeah, it probably was. It has been. A spring chicken. Yeah, so Bellatrex, any sort of fond memories? Do you remember the layout downstairs? <laughs> I don't think I should <laughs> mention that on a family show. No, it was, it was, well, yeah, it was my first sailing trip as a skipper. But actually, the one thing I do remember of that, this is um, a group of girls from work. I took them sailing and they literally turned up with high heels and hard suitcases. You're coming out of the class you've already told the people this one. Oh, have I? Yeah. Okay. That's that's my lasting memory of that trip. How on earth did you squeeze hard suitcases onto that boat? <laughs> they did. I it's mean, tiny. They were kind of like, um, what do you call the uh, overhead luggage type size? Well, did you just pile them up in the dinghy and tow them along? Oh, they were in one of the aft cabins. So what, what size is by the trucks? It's 32. 32. <laughs> How many people did you squeeze on there? I think there were five of us. And the aft cabin was full of It was two aft cabins, so it's the uh, same layout as Happy Afloat. They were small aft cabins. Who had the luxury of having the um, saloon to themselves then? I can't remember. You? Might have been. Yeah, you but you'd have to share all the cabins, wouldn't you, apart from one person that got the saloon? Mm. No, if you've got four peak and then two technically double aft cabins. Yeah, one's full of suitcases. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. It's too long ago. Yet another of the small world encounters that would happen on this adventure. With the fair weather... It was time to get the fishing kit out. And go fishing. Dad was the only one to get a bite. Two mackerel, to be precise. But according to our measurements... They were just a bit too small to keep. So, back to the sea they went. But a catch is a catch, and Dad was taking an early lead in the summer fishing competition... Fishing competition, boys? Oh, yeah, the competition I won in the end. <laughs> oh, we should, we'll find out, shall we? No spoilers. <laughs> we'll find out who won, shall we? Actually, the joke is we lost the post-it note that had all of our scores on, so technically Whoa, no one won. Oh, no, it wasn't a post-it note. It was written up on our blackboard. Yes, it was. Are you all a bit competitive about this? Nah, not really. <laughs> we liked the spot so much that we stayed for the night. The next day, we were up and away by 9.30, sailing fast and close hauled. Plan was to head further down the Lynn of Lawn and anchor at the north end of Kerrera. Kerrera is the big island opposite Oban. We have used this anchorage many times, and it is one of our favourite go-tos. It's out of the way and feels isolated, although it's just around the corner from Oban. And it's easy to get ashore for a walk around Kerrera. Once at Ottymore Bay, the plan was to have a barbecue. We had even got the food out of our freezer in anticipation. Are you um, confident about that pronunciation of um, Ottymore Bay? No, because I don't think I've ever called it Ottymore Bay before. It's basically just Kerrera Bay or the anchorage at Kerrera. To make it a bit easier, it's just below Charlotte's Bay. (laughs) By a fish farm. <laughs> of course it's by a fish farm. The latest weather forecast scuppered our plans. Well, we're definitely sailing. Yeah. Eight knots? Wow. Hmm. That's what XC weather says. Did you look at anything else? No. Yeah, 
I was going to say, can you put the radio on to 62 after that, please? No internet, and that's perfect timing. 62? Yep, 62. Just please. Welcome to Harris, I'm looking at point 24 hour forecast. Northwest, fine, smooth or slight, occasionally moderate until later on west. The wind was westerly, which was great for sailing, but it would be increasing in strength and moving to the northwest, which would be no good for the Kerrera anchorage at Ottymore Bay. Are you confident now? No. <laughs> we needed a new plan. Contradiction to windy, uh, to basically, isn't it? What is it? Well, it's saying northwest three to five. Mm. Where are we going then? Mm. It's not particularly. Clara, it's not really good for northwest, is it? Well, yeah, basically. What's the holy night in Ardmucknish Bay then? Ardmucknish Bay was nearby, and we would be sheltered from a northwest wind. Pronunciation confidence out of ten. <laughs> Why do I always get all the names that are really tricky to pronounce? We decided to pay a visit to the nearby Dunstaffnish Marina on the way. So we could top up our fuel tank. And see if we could beg them for some gas. We contacted the marina on VHF and were directed into the marina and told to tie up alongside the fuel berth, which was free. We'd been there before, so we knew they had an easily accessible fuel berth. Except when we arrived. John Stafford Marina, this is your happy afloat, over. Yeah, it's all over, good message. Hi there, uh, we'd like to uh, fill up with some fuel, please, over. Yeah, if you just think of me, I'm going to fuel burst, it's not to be done, and that's a big one spot, right? Can you see it? It's up there, isn't it? There didn't seem to be a fuel berth where we were expecting to find one. As we got closer, there was no fuel berth to be seen. The marina staff called us up on the radio. There had been a mistake. The fuel berth was occupied, but they planned to move the boat to another berth very soon. There was a massive super yacht on the fuel berth. So large that it completely hid the fuel berth from view. So we went off to find a temporary berth while the super yacht filled her tanks. Okay, we'll uh, go and uh, see what we can find and park up and uh, await further instructions from you. Over. Yeah. Yeah. We don't suppose there's anywhere we could just go starboard side too because we've just rigged up for it, but. Just go on that bit near a bit, Do you mind? We're trying to make chase for her to move off so we can get you on the fuel bank. Okay. You can go, do you want to go starboard side too, just on here? Let's tie onto it anyway and then. Just try and left here, something. Are you going to get that one? Get it off tight. Trying to find a berth in an unfamiliar marina while being blown around is quite stressful. And tempers were frayed. The adults eventually berthed and when they had calmed down, we went in search of gas. Now Dunstaffnage has a small independent chandler's adjacent to the marina office. We stopped to the marina office first and inquired about gas. Hooray! They had some! 
On our way back to get the empty gas bottle for exchange, we stopped at the Chandler's. Luck was on our side. They had gas too. It's like a bus, isn't it? Wait all day for a bus and then so no, six turn up at once. Absolutely. However, the Chandlers wanted five pounds more than the marina office. That was literally next door. Quite how that business model works is still a mystery to me. And they were definitely non-negotiable on the price. So the Chandlers didn't get our custom. And the marina office did. I asked if we could buy an entire new bottle of gas in addition to our exchange bottle to increase our supplies from three to four bottles. Mum likes to be well stocked on everything. But due to the national famine of gas, we were told that this wasn't an option. Back to the boat we went. Hoping the fuel berth would now be free. We met one of the marina staff on the way who updated us on the super yacht situation. It turned out they hadn't even started to fuel up yet. The crew were too busy readying the boat for the next set of guests. We went back to Happy Afloat and had lunch. We got another update on the fuel situation. The mega yacht had still not filled its tanks. And they were in absolutely no hurry to move. The marina staff offered us a poor alternative. A small berth that would possibly be near enough to use the fuel hose but meant we would be blown into a berth with a short pontoon. And it was jolly windy now. So we said thanks, but no thanks, and would think about coming back tomorrow. We left on Staffnage with a refill of gas, but sadly, no top-up of fuel. It's all swings and roundabouts. We headed to Ardmucknish Bay to anchor. And the fishing competition resumed. And Dad took a commanding lead. Hammy, did you catch this in this round of the competition? I caught a few small ones, I'm guessing. First time with my rod. But obviously not enough to take the lead. Leon, how many did you catch on this round? A fair few. Really? Sarah, you want to explain your fishing technique? Yeah, it's sit and watch the rest of you. <laughs> I, I like casting a line, and that's about as far as it goes. And jiggling the line around a bit. And the reeling in? Yeah, and the reeling in. It's just the catching the fish that you're not too keen on. No, which is quite good, really, because I don't have any success in them biting anyway. So, it's... Though I did catch a massive haul of fish, obviously. Oh. Obviously, is that why we didn't have any for dinner that night? The fish that were caught were all far too small to go on the barbecue. The anchorage was a little gusty, but it had died down enough to fire up the barbecue. Good job we got the food out of the freezer as the fish were too small. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Always good to have a plan B. The next day, we would be going to Oban, big town. Where we had parcels to collect. A huge bag of laundry to wash. And a massive provisioning exercise to complete before our next leg of the adventure. But that is a story for another time. Hey, that's my line. OK, anything we missed out from this episode of the adventure? Yep. Go on then. Well, you know when we said the rare beast that was camping gas? Yes. I thought it was haggis. What, haggis <laughs> is a rare beast? Yeah, you but you've got to catch them with a porridge gun while they're running round the hill because of their lopsided legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not rare, they're just very difficult to see. Yeah, but how do you catch them? With a porridge gun. Fuel filter mayonnaise update time. I read an article in the Cruising Association Members magazine about the increasing number of reports of fuel filters blocked with a pale brown sludge. It's been a problem for boaters as well as farmers. And after samples have been sent away for testing, the sludge is apparently caused by a carbolic acid or what the Victorians called soap. Modern diesel has a percentage of biofuel added which oxidises and degrades, forming the acid. Advice is not to store diesel longer than six months and only store what you're going to use. The old advice of keeping the tank full to avoid condensation is now sort of obsolete. Make sure you regularly remove water from the bottom of your tank and use a fuel treatment with an antioxidant element. Keep your tanks empty if you're not planning to go anywhere, like over winter. It looks like issues with fuel are going to be a feature of the future, so make sure you have a system where filters can be quickly swapped out while at sea. And as you know, we like the look-alikey ray cores or fake cores. 
Is that what they're technically called now? Um, yeah, a lot of people are calling them fake whores online. Okay. So we were wrong. It's not mayo. It was soap. We love feedback. A big thank you to everyone who has posted a review or sent us a message. Thank you to Simon and David for the lovely five-star reviews on Audible. Audible listeners have made a sterling effort. Although they only make up a tiny percentage of our listens, they account for half of our reviews. Thank Thank you. you! If you have any questions, send us an email or a posting on our Facebook page. All relevant links are on the website happyafloat.com. If you would like to help us grow, spread the word. As I told my brother after I'd eaten all my chocolate eggs, it's nice to share. And don't forget to follow and rate us in your favourite podcast app. For those of you that like a slideshow, there is also a YouTube version of the podcast. So you can see some of the sites that accompany each stage of the adventure. Hey! Apple Podcast listeners, this is a not-so-gentle reminder. Leave us a review. Team Apple needs to up their game, otherwise they'll be left in the wake of the Audible crew. If you do post a review somewhere, send us a message so we can track it down and mention you in the podcast. Happyafloat.com Next time aboard Happy Afloat. Oban, the gateway to the Isles. Until next time, happy sailing!